Hello, my target focused friends. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're dialing in the focus on the importance of focus and how distractions and the lack of target focus are some of the biggest reasons we do not hit our intended targets in life. You know, your life is moving in the direction of your focus. Do you like where your focus is bringing you? Is your focus leading you to the life you want to live or are distractions keeping you from living up to your full potential? Are you ready to dial in your focus today? Let's go. In episode one, we laid out the three pillars of a target focused life, vision, focus, and trigger pull. And then in episode two, we dove in deeper to what is vision, how we create vision in our life, and how we take our vision and turn it into a reality, right? Today, we're taking the next step, and we're diving in deeper on focus. Now, if you missed episode two that was all about creating vision, I'm going to highly recommend you go back and rewatch that because without the clear vision in our life, it's really challenging to know what we should be focusing on. So that's kind of a, a prelude to this episode. So highly encourage you to go back and listen to that. Vision gives us a picture of the future we want to create, right? This is the essential starting point. With a clear vision in mind, we can then dial in the focus and move closer to that future. But before we get too deep, what is focus? Okay, uh, fun fact. Focus comes from a Latin word that meant hearth or fireplace. So how did we get from hearth or fireplace to how we think about focus now, whether it's focusing our vision or focusing our mental capabilities? Well, okay, this is cool. Listen to this. In the scientific Latin of the 17th century, the word is used to refer to the point at which rays of light refracted by a lens converge. Because rays of sunlight, when directed by a magnifying glass, can produce enough heat to ignite paper, a word meaning fireplace is quite appropriate as a metaphor to describe their convergence point. Okay, right? So we're going to be talking about that a little bit uh, in, in just a few moments. But first, let's talk about how we use the term focus today. Focus with our eyes. Did you know that the human eye, like our field of view with our two eyes together, there's a large amount of overlap, our binocular vision, where our vision overlaps between the two eyes. But combined, we see about 180 degrees field of vision. But out of our field of vision, our total field of view, about 1% is in focus. This is like that high def vision. Y'all know what focus is. You know, you know when something is crisp and clear, easy to see versus something that's soft or blurry, hard to make out. But did you know that only about 1% of our vision is focus? So just like vision, uh, there is a physical focus and a mental focus. Uh, back in episode two, we talked about how we have a physical vision, eyesight, and then we have uh, the mind's eye vision, uh, more on the mental side. But there's a lot of parallels between the power of eyesight focus and our mental focus. So why is focus so important to living the target focus life other than you put it in the name, Steve? Obviously, there's some important to focus. Being target focused does have a lot of meaning. It's a name that um, I put a lot of thought into. And over the course of my journey, I saw the importance of focus. And here are two huge reasons why focus is so important. We move the direction of our focus. Tony Robbins says it very, very well. He says, where focus goes, energy flows. And uh, I often translate that in the field on the shotgun side of things to where our focus goes, our shotgun flows. Very, very true when you're shooting a shotgun. Um, you know, our focus affects us physically in, in sports, shooting, driving, um, hand-eye coordination, right? Whatever you're doing in a sport, wherever you want your energy to go, if you're shooting a basketball and you want the ball to go in the hoop, where do you focus? On the hoop. You want the puck to go in the net or a corner of the net, where do you focus? Corner of the net. Because where we focus, generally, our energy flows. That works in hand-eye coordination. 
We're talking about physical site focus here and how our energy flows there, but it also works mentally. Where our mental focus goes, what we pay attention to, what we dwell on, what we focus on, will determine some element of your reality. You focus on the problems, you will always find more. Focus on the good, and you seem to find more good all around. Isn't that weird how that works? Have you ever noticed like maybe a friend gets a car and they get, uh, let's just call it a red uh, Mazda Miata. I, I just randomly came up with that. And once your friend has it, you start to notice these red Miatas. I don't even know if that's how you say it. I'm probably saying it wrong. Uh, anyways, you notice whatever car it is, you notice more of them all around. Why? Because it is now relevant to your life and it has become something that you focused on and is now relevant. Those cars were all around you to begin with, but now you notice them. It's important that we determine where we want to place our focus, where we want to place our attention, because where we focus tunes our awareness to the world around us. That's why when you dwell on problems, you seem to always find more. When you dwell on gratitude and good, you always seem to find more. It's not changing what the world is. It's changing our perception of the world. Focus tunes our awareness. That is huge. We'll be talking more about that in future episodes. But the second reason is focus concentrates energy for greater impact. Right? So picture the sun beating down on a forest floor of dry leaves. That sun is hot, carries some energy. But have you ever seen the leaves just start on fire? I haven't. I'm guessing you haven't either. But what if you were to take a magnifying glass and concentrate those rays and down to a small beam? I'm sure many of you have seen this. If you haven't, look up YouTube videos of starting a fire with a magnifying glass. When you take that energy that was already there and you focus and concentrate it into a specific area and all of a sudden becomes powerful enough to start a fire. Uh, so that's kind of coming back to that early definition, the Latin word that was hearth or fireplace. W when you focus energy, it can have a greater impact. So, right, it was the, the same power, but different results when focused. The energy didn't change, the focus changed and concentrated the energy. So, I don't care, this is a quote by Zig Ziglar, by the way. I don't care how much power, brilliance, or energy you have if you don't harness it and focus it on a specific target and hold it there you're never going to accomplish as much as your ability warrants. Well said, the late, great Zig Ziglar. Look up some of his quotes. He's got some awesome, awesome stuff. I've listened to quite a, quite a bit of Zig Ziglar over the years. I think that says it very well. You can have amazing power, brilliance, and energy, but if you don't harness it, focus it in on a specific target, you'll never reach what your ability warrants. Then uh, Alexander Graham Bell said this, great inventor, concentrate all your thoughts upon the work at hand. The sun rays do not burn until brought into focus. So our focus concentrates energy for greater impact. And then remember point one was we move in the direction of our focus. So we want to move towards something. That's what living a target focused life is, is moving towards something a purpose, a, a life of design and intention. And then the focus concentrates the energy for greater impact. I use this analogy all the time in the shooting world. Um, maybe you're going after a flock of ducks or a flock of ducks is coming in, I should say. And you see the whole flock, but you don't focus in on just one bird and you start to pull the trigger. It's pretty incredible when you have a whole bunch of birds and you're trying to see them all and you're shooting a scatter gun that shoots hundreds of pellets out in the air, and you can't hit a single bird because you didn't focus on a single bird. When you focus on a moving target, your body has a way of coordinating all your energy to move towards where you're focused. 
so, so important. Okay, so practical action to live a more focused life. Here's what I'm going to say. One of the best ways we can dial in the focus is to create goals. So you might have that vision we talked about in episode two. That's a broad vision. That's kind of like a future destination, uh, a future state. But the goal is going to be something that moves us closer to our vision. Vision is too far out, too broad to create a focus in the present that will lead you closer to the vision, right? So we want to dial it in. You may have the vision to be debt-free in the future. That's amazing, right? But it's too vague. Create a goal to pay off one item of debt in the next 12 weeks. Make something more near-term that you can focus on and put just a tremendous amount of energy on that when you accomplish it, you will be closer to that far-off vision. So create goals. We'll talk more in future episodes about details of creating goals um, and, and stuff around that to make you more successful. Uh, but here's one of them. Write your stinking goals down, man. Look at them daily. It's so easy to be consumed by the busyness of the day-to-day. But we need to re- be reminded of what to focus on. It's too easy to get distracted. Write your goals down. There's studies out there that show just by writing a goal down, you tremendously increase the odds of you reaching that goal. Such a simple step, but something becomes real when your mind has the goal and it translates through your body onto paper and it's written and you look at it daily, you're on your way. Lots of other things with goals. Um, We'll dive into that later. Number three, Create a plan for your time. We all have 1,440 minutes in a day. What is your budget? What do you mean, Steve? What is your budget? Well, you have 1,440 minutes. How are you going to spend it? A lot of us create financial budgets, which is interesting because financial resources, in theory, are unlimited, right? I might make X amount of dollars per month, and that's why I make a budget, because let's just say I make, I make $5,000 a month. I better have a budget that keeps me, me within my means. But in theory, I could make more money, right? I could double that. I could have a great month and, and do $10,000, $20,000. But we budget our money because at the end of the month, we want to be able to pay our obligations, pay our rent, uh, buy food, you know, important stuff like that. But how many of us budget our time and actually think about the finite resource of time? I don't care how good you are. You will not create more than 1,440 minutes in a day. We all have the same amount of time. How precious is this resource that we need to steward and be accountable to and manage? You can't make more of it. Zig Ziglar, another Zig Ziglar quote. Lack of direction, not lack of time, is the problem. We all have 24-hour days. It's true, Zig. Well said. So create that plan for your time. You know, create your ideal day. Uh, There's there's a lot of people out here that talk about it, uh, out on the internets and uh, all that stuff. You can find it. We'll probably be talking about it in, in the future, how we can create a time budget, create our ideal day, Map it out. And when you do that, you realize, I don't have time to do it all. I am limited because I got to sleep. And even if I didn't have to sleep, I would just pack more in there. And I still couldn't get it all done. It's reality. We're limited by time. So plan accordingly. Figure out what you want to say yes to, what you want to say no to. And, And that leads us to the next point, point number four, which is reduce distractions. Because your time is limited and your, your calling is too big and your, your time is too short to be distracted by things that aren't leading you to the destination you're called, chosen, and desire to live. Distractions are anything that's not leading you towards your vision and goals, right? A distraction prevents someone from focusing on something else, a diversion, leisure, or recreational activity. Distractions can come in many forms for a variety of reasons. But I think one of the top distractions that I see in our world right now 
is media. Yes, media. It is constantly in your pocket, uh, 24 hour news cycles, uh, constant bombardment, notifications. You're carrying around a device that has the ability to notify you of every little thing that happens in the world constantly, which is just nonstop stuff. Some of it's good, um, but too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. That's what being intentional and target focus is all about. You know, for example, I like to keep an eye on what's going on in the world. I like to watch a little bit of news. It's fine. I, th I think that's a good thing. But being consumed by the emotional propagation that the news media does to draw you in, keep you sucked so they can sell more advertising, that can consume your life, make you less effective to do what you were called to do. It's distracting you. It can also put you in a really bad mood. Have you noticed that? Why is that? Well, because as we consume more and more news, our focus goes to more and more problems because the news primarily covers problems. And when we're consumed, aka focused on problems, we seem to find a lot more of them. So I'm not against news. I'm not against social media. I'm not against Netflix. Uh, well, in some ways, kind of. Um, but those things in and of themselves are not bad. But what you have to evaluate and only you can evaluate is this distracting me and keeping me from doing what I really strongly feel called and have a desire to do. That's the important discernment there, right? You might tell me you watch an hour of, of television a night. Great. I, I have no problem with that. You are the one that has to evaluate that and decide, is this hour benefiting me or is it distracting me? Is it taking my focus from where I want to go and keeping me from achieving the things I want to achieve? Not only do I want to, but I feel called to. Because I think we all have desires in life and, and desires aren't our own desires aren't necessarily bad. Uh, that's a whole nother topic. Maybe I'll have uh, Pastor Dave on for that one. Pastor Dave, if you're listening, I think we got a podcast episode right there. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, I'm getting distracted making this podcast. And, and that's something to bring up as well. We all get distracted. This isn't something that I necessarily do perfectly. No, let me rephrase that. This is something I mess up all the time. I, in my professional career, in my family life, I lose focus. I get distracted in all sorts of activities. Now, I do like to sit down with my wife at the end of the day once the kids are in bed and we watch a little show together. Uh, it's a good, some good side-by-side -side time. I find it valuable. It aligns with my vision for life. It's not leading me closer necessarily to any goals that I have, but it is in alignment, congruent with my vision to spend time with my wife. Now, there's better ways to spend time, but when it's at nine o'clock at night, like we're ready to wind down, right? You get that. So number five, beware of your stories. What is a story? It's a thought or a belief that you assume to be true. These are things that you say to yourself in your head or out loud. Here's the question. Are they in alignment? Just like distractions, discerning if it's a distraction. Is it in alignment with your vision and goals? If you have a goal to make more money in your business, and your story is money is hard to come by. You always have to work hard for your money. Money doesn't grow on trees. Examine those stories and say, are these stories leading me closer to my goal? And I know I'll get some pushback on this. And they'll say, well, money's not easy to come by. It doesn't grow on trees. I don't know. Maybe. Is that the story you want to hold on to? Why couldn't your story be, God bless, blesses me abundantly. I receive openly the blessings God has for me. I put out good service into the world, and I'm blessed by receiving money. Whatever it is, you, you come up with your own stories. Both could be true, but they're not absolute truths. Not at all. Your stories need to align with where you want to go. Otherwise, you're working against yourself. If my goal is to grow a business, and, and let's say part of it's to, to build to that revenue goal, and I just keep repeating to myself internally that I'm never going to make it, 
that money is challenging, all the things, probably not going to make it. So be aware of your stories. If they don't align, rewrite your stories. What could you say instead? Uh, this is a dumb, dumb example. But I, I don't like crowds. Like, I don't like lines like Disney. That That is not the place for me. I've been there uh, a few times with the kids, and I always enjoy being with my family, but it wouldn't be top of my list. I don't want to go sit in lines. I love people. I don't want to go sit in lines and buy crappy overpriced hot dogs and, you know, all that stuff. But... Uh, going to crowded places and looking for parking spots is not my jam either. I don't know that it's anybody's jam. But I've pulled into a lot of parking lots, and they're just packed. It's very easy to say, oh, this place is packed. I'm not going to ever find a spot. This sucks. You know, whatever. Kind of have that negative attitude. And what I choose to do, and I do this on a regular basis, is I pull into a parking lot and I go, hey, I know there's a spot just for me very close. And then it just alleviates stress. I turn the corner, and more often than not, hey, there's a spot. And it's just a totally different outcome. I'm not saying my thought magically opened up a space for me, but the way I engaged with the world dramatically changed based on my story. And my story that I choose to have when I go into a parking lot is, there's a spot just for me, and I'll find it soon. Changes how I engage with the world. Okay, so rewrite your stories if they're not in alignment. It's hard for your life to move in a direction incongruent with your stories. This is the part this is a part of focus. If you're focused on the reasons you can't accomplish something, what hope do you have to get a result that is opposite of your thoughts? Jim Rohn says this, focus on the solutions, not the problems. You've all seen them. Maybe you are this person. But it's the person that always has problems and never has solutions. Why? Why do they always have problems and never have solutions? Because they are caught up focusing their mental energy on the problem. Now, sometimes we do got to give some focus to problems. I, I get that. But if we turn that energy and start to focus in on a solution rather than a problem, we will be a lot better ahead. You know those people too. I know you've seen them. They got solutions. You bring a problem, bam, here's the solution. They're thinking differently. Their focus is different. All right, number six, last one. We're almost there. Thanks for hanging in. Acknowledge when you're distracted and get back on focus. <laughs> get back focused. I'm laughing because uh, I've already done this in the episode. I realized that I was going off on a tangent and I had to pull it back in. We all get distracted. Everyone gets distracted to some extent or another. The quicker you can recognize your lack of focus on what matters and refocus, the better off you will be. So just learn to be aware of when you're losing focus, when you're being distracted. Not a big deal. No need to beat yourself up about it. Just turn your focus back to what matters and keep going, right? Because if we focus... Uh, if we dwell or focus on the mistakes or the past, where we've screwed up, it doesn't allow us to keep a focus on the present and what we're actually trying to accomplish. That's, that's a huge thing. I love chatting about this stuff, guys. I'm pumped up. You know, it, even if y'all don't get anything out of this, I need to do this for my own benefit. Because these messages that I put out, I need them as much as anybody and I need to hear them over and over, just like anybody. So I hope you have found some value out of this episode. I hope it's been encouraging. We have went through vision in the last episode. This one was all about focus. You start putting those first two together, and you are well on your way. See, part of the reason I started Target Focus Life is because I realized that people were living much lower. Most of us were living much lower than what we were capable of. And now that I've seen what's possible when we create some vision, when we dial in the focus and then ultimately pull the trigger, which we'll talk about in the next episode, there's no telling how far we can go. That's all we got for this episode. Until next time, work on dialing in that focus. And we'll see you on the next episode.